everyone, we're back. This is the Cup of Joe show. I'm Joe, that's Jeremy. Back for another week. Movies, movies, movies. I so want to, like, start over. That was, like, such a bad entrance to the show. But uh, it can only go up from here. Think of it that way. Okay, so, um, last week I saw a movie. Um, Jeremy, it was, it was too late. Um, he has a job that he works 6 to, like, 2 or 2.30 or something like it, that. It's 6 to 2. I get up at 5. Yeah. So we went at, like, I don't know, it was, like, 10.30 or something. It was, it was late, so it was just me and our friend Jason saw a ride along. So I'll talk about that shortly. Um, well, I mean, I'll talk about it short in a short way. Not shortly. I'll talk about it now in a short manner. We should just start over. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, my God. So ride along. Uh, it's, I was surprised that it wasn't rated R going into it, actually. I didn't know. I didn't know the rating, and then as I was watching it, I'm just like, Wow, this is rated PG-13, isn't it? And, um, it was. And it's weird when you have leading men Kevin Hart and Ice Cube and you put them in a PG-13 movie. Um, so... But that, do that doesn't mean it was bad. I thought it was funny. I thought that Kevin Hart was very funny. Um, Ice Cube was actually just kind of there, interestingly enough. I thought that their, uh, their back and forth would be kind of good, but uh, Kevin Hart really pulled that film. Although Ice Cube did have some great moments that weren't speaking, but were actually just facial expressions, which was probably the funniest part of the movie, when he makes this facial expression after Kevin Hart does something, and I don't really want to spoil it, but uh, yeah, that will make you laugh. So ultimately, it was funny, I enjoyed it, but it honestly would have been better if it was rated R. Of course, if it were rated R, it probably wouldn't have made as much as at the box office. So, I mean, there's there's strategy there uh, doing it that way. But So, funny, but could have been funnier, is the basic thing. Um, if you like Kevin Hart, go see it. But he's not really going to curse at all. So, it's just, I don't know. It's just weird. It's just weird. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, about that. Okay. I just quoted Forrest Gump. Did you uh, Did you get that? Did anybody get that? All right. That's all I have to say about that. That was. I'm sure people get it because my impressions are great. My impressions are great, and I know that. I'm surprised it didn't sound anything like Bill Cosby, which is what it usually sounds like. So. Um, Everything he does eventually turns into Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Yes, I agree. I agree. So, now that we've got our movie out of the way, uh, we're going to move on to uh, Jeremy and the box office. Okay. Alright. So, we'll start with number five from last weekend, which was Jack Ryan's Shadow Recruit. And that fell 41% to a little over $9 million, and it has a total of $30.5 million. Um, that's not a bad hold, but considering that its opening was so weak kind of is a bad hold, because it needed to have, like, a really good hold to make up for that. So, I mean, the movie might end up around 45, 50 million, which is definitely disappointing, and uh, this is not going to be the start of a, of a franchise. The, yeah, the Jack Ryan franchise is just pretty much dead. I, I, I it don't, looks that way. I don't see it. There, there needed to be more... I mean, I was excited about it when I first heard, and then it got pushed back, and I mean, you watch the trailer, and there's just, I don't know, there's really nothing nothing to it. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a great, I mean, I like Chris Pine. I do like Kevin Costner, even though for some reason he's in, like, every film this year. Um, you know, but uh, it's just, th there, was, there was nothing exciting about that trailer. So I, I, and, you know, I haven't really heard much about it to say otherwise. Well, all right then. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry I spoke during your box office wrap-up, okay? I will not speak anymore. Well, I right? have to be honest, during the time that you were just talking, I just zoned <laughs> out. I didn't do it on purpose, and I don't mean that as any disrespect to you, but I, 
I just completely, I was elsewhere, and I have no idea what you said. But I want you to know that I respect <laughs> your opinion, and I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> but I just zoned out. I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, I like being honest. <laughs> anyway, okay, so number four last weekend was the movie that will not go away, Frozen. Uh, it posted another good hold, dropping just 23%. To 9.1 million, and it now has a total of about 348 million. Now, if you haven't heard, Frozen uh, this weekend is coming out with a special sing along edition, so uh, check your local listings, and uh, there will probably be a few show times of uh, a sing along version, which is exactly what it sounds like. The words to the songs will be at the bottom of the screen, there will be a bouncing snowflake, so everyone can go and sing along. And if you haven't seen Frozen yet, go see it, and if you have seen it, go see the sing-along version, and sing along, because it's coming close to uh, passing out Despicable Me 2, which is a movie that I liked, it was a good movie, but I liked Frozen more. So, what what do you think will happen, what, what do you think the sing-along will do? Do you think it will boost it over Despicable Me 2? Um, not this weekend, I don't think, but it'll get it close, it'll get it right within striking range, and... I'll talk more about what I think um, the sing-along is going to do to its box office when we get to the releases for um, for this weekend. So, uh, foreshadowing, I guess. <laughs> Number three was The Nut Job, and that fell 38% to $12.1 million and has pulled in $40 million. That's, um, that's not bad. It's better than Freebirds and... Uh, you know, the budget was only $42 million, so... I mean, hey, that's pretty much all you could ask for. Uh, number two was Lone Survivor, and that fell 42% to $12.9 million. Has a total of $94 million. So, you know, that's going to easily go right past $100 million, probably finish around 120 or so. And our number one film for the second weekend in a row was Ride Along. And that fell 49% to $21.3 million, has a total of $75.5 million. Um, you know, that's really not that bad of a drop, actually, considering that it opened, you know, so huge and bigger than most people expected. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty solid. Um, I think it should easily find its way past uh, $100 million. I'm shocked that it made it as much as it did so far, actually. Oh, absolutely. yeah, me too. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just thought that all this, like, I feel like anymore it's just like Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, to the point where, like, people like him, but, like, enough. Like, you know, and so, I don't know. I guess I just thought that this would kind of not fall short, but not make as much money as it did, and it's having, it's having great success. Um, so, and like I said, it's 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 not bad. It, it's not bad. The, the reviews are pretty awful, but I, I'm honestly, it was it was funny. It's but it's like not that funny. Um, so I, I am really surprised that it made as much as it did, and uh, good for Kevin Hart and Ice Cube. Um, anyway, that's the box office. Um, brought to you by Jeremy Evans and my input not listened to. By him. I've listened to everything since I found <laughs> out. <laughs> Alright, good, good. Anyway, we've hit the movie. We've hit the box office. And now, what's coming out this weekend? Yeah. That's how we do it. That we do. Right. Um, okay, so the first movie that's coming out this weekend is Labor Day, which, you know, I'm, I know everybody else has said this, and I said it too in my, uh, January movie preview, but I'll say it again, it should have come out in September, or late October, if it's one of those weekends where, like, Friday's August 31st, I, I said October, but I meant <laughs> August, but anyway, it's one of those weekends that's technically still August, but then Labor Day is on the Monday or something, anyway, uh, it has Kate Winslet and Josh Brolin, and Josh Brolin's an escaped convict, and he falls in love with Kate Winslet, I think. Um, it doesn't look interesting, and I think it'll make, like, four million. It, it looks terrible, and I, 
but Kate Winslet will probably get an Oscar nomination. Um, and that's and, that, and that's it. Yeah, four million. I'll I'll go. I'll give it a four point two five. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens there. Okay, and the other movie that comes out is that awkward moment. Uh, this stars Zac Efron, who um, I actually like. I think he's a, he's a charismatic young man, and uh, he's not really young. He's like twenty eight, I think. But anyway, um, I didn't know this movie was R until a couple days ago. I thought it was uh, thought it was gonna be PG thirteen, but yeah, it's R. So apparently, it's a bit more adult, I guess. But um, it it strikes me as like m maybe the kind of like romantic comedy that like your girlfriend drags you to, and you're like. Oh, okay, this isn't that bad, this is kind of funny, or that part was like, okay, that was kind of funny, like, I can tolerate this. So, I, th I think it would be, it looks better than the standard rom-com, but it still doesn't look that appealing. Like, it, if I got dragged to it, I'd be like, okay, but, like, I wouldn't go out of my way to see it. That said, uh, I'm thinking, like, 12 million for the weekend. In my opinion, that was, like, way too much time spent on that awkward moment. Agreed. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to say, going to be terrible, no interests, would rather see Neighbors with Zac Efron whenever that comes out. There you go. And I don't disagree with you about Zac Efron. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think, he's, I think he's pretty good, and he, I think he's come a bit of a ways since High School Musical to separate Indeed. himself. Okay, well, that said, um, I think this weekend should be pretty interesting um, in the battle for the number one spot. It, it's Super Bowl weekend. Go Seahawks. Um, and that always throws a wrench into things. You know, if you look at, like, the, uh, the daily figures for a given weekend, uh, you know, pretty much everything usually drops on Sunday unless there's a Monday holiday. And it depends on the movie, you know... Um, Generally, you'll see things maybe in, like, the 30% range that drop from Saturday to Sunday. But this weekend, uh, you'll see drops more like 70% on Sunday because everybody's watching the game. Nobody's going to the movies. Um, occasionally, counter-programming movies can do really well on Super Bowl Sunday, like the uh, Hannah Montana concert movie that did extraordinarily well over Super... Su can't talk. Super Bowl weekend. Um... So, that said, uh, things will probably drop more this weekend than they would ordinarily, especially things like, like Ride Along that, you know, appeal to a male crowd for the most part. So given that, and given the fact that that awkward moment doesn't look that appealing, we have to acknowledge the genuine possibility that with the sing-along Frozen could, uh, go back up to the number one spot. Um... It's not inconceivable that Frozen could increase a little. Uh, made about nine million this weekend, so inconceivable. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's it's not unthinkable that uh, Frozen could go up to ten or eleven million, and if Ride Along, you know, drops pretty far, and that awkward moment doesn't make that much, it could be number one, which would be absolutely unheard of in its 10th or 11th weekend now and um but i mean e whatever happens unless some unless that awkward moment just completely breaks out this is going to be a really weak weekend anyway because i don't it's unlikely that anything makes over 12 or 13 million i got you i'm with you i'm with you no, i'm sorry you said inconceivable i know so i, I know. had to I, say yes Inconceivable. No, it's it's required. Every time you say that word, By law. you have to say it like, um, I forget his name, in I, The Princess Bride, I, I but in The Princess name. Bride. Um, so anyway, you got the Seahawks? Do you yeah, got I mean, them, or do you just like them? I... Do you think they're going to win, it's tough, or do you man. just want them it's, to win? It's, 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 it's tough. tough. It's a good... It's a good matchup. It's a good mm -hmm. game. Um, mm -hmm. I will be rooting for the Seahawks. I, I, I do think the Broncos will win, though. Darn, because I think the Broncos are going to win, too. 
um, which means the Seahawks will probably win because I'm so wrong on everything. I think in the playoffs, the games I've picked, I'm like 2 and 10 or something. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what I'm talking about, really. Um, but I think that I'll be rooting for Richard Sherman to get like six picks. <laughs> And like in the loss, he'll just be like, "Well, I'm the best," or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, so, I'm ro- I'm rooting. What I'm rooting for is uh, I would like to see Peyton Manning win another one. So I am rooting for the Broncos, um, not because I well I hate Pete Carroll, hate Pete Carroll, like the rest of the Seahawks team. Um, so I wouldn't be upset if the Seahawks won, but I'd rather see Peyton win and then retire. I'd love to see him just retire. I don't think it's going to happen, but I- I'd love to see him win and retire. Because I don't know what's wrong up with his neck. Uh, they're going to reevaluate at the end of the season, uh, but I, I think he wins it. Uh, I, I think they have a really, I think they have a really nice team, and I know they beat a banged up um, Patriots team in the AFC Championship. But that's, I mean, that's been Peyton Manning's Achilles' heel, and he just came out and torched the Patriots, uh, and you know that that team really brought their game, and I, I think they're going to do it again in the. In the Super Bowl, so I, I will go with the Broncos. I think they're going to win, and I, I would like to see them win. But I would still like to see a Richard Sherman interview. Uh, I would just like to see it. I'd like to see him go off. Just go off on the 49ers again. Don't even talk about the game. Just be like, but but Crabtree still can't... You can't put Crabtree against me. Like Do something like that. L-O-B. That's, and there you go. Um, so that's that's what I'm rooting for. Okay. All right. Well, um, to add to that. Well, I do have some cool. movie news that I want to oh, touch can, on. Oh, that I, that then I, do that. I don't know if you saw. I'm this sorry. I thought we were done, but no. No, go. no. It's it's Continue. fine. Continue. Um, okay. So yesterday, some casting decisions were made for the uh, upcoming Batman versus Superman film, and uh, well, one of which was uh, Jeremy Irons was cast as Alfred, which is like oh, okay, you know, <laughs> he's yeah, he's a good actor. I mean, that's that's fine it doesn't really affect the movie too much who alfred is but uh the bigger news was that the uh that i can't talk again <laughs> was that they was that they had cast uh lex luthor and you haven't seen this no okay well when you hear the casting decision it's like one of those things that like somebody might say is a joke and then the other person doesn't even laugh because it's so insanely ridiculous of a joke that it's just not funny at all and you you know it's a joke you know the other person is lying but no it's actually the truth so guess who they cast uh, Gene Hackman no okay I, I, I don't I don't know Jesse Eisenberg really yeah as Lex yeah I have no idea what to say to that that's really not a joke? No. Dead serious. Jesse exactly. I, I <laughs> it was Mark Zuckerberg from The Social Network, if you don't know. I have absolutely... Uh, I, I, I have floored him. <laughs> like... I was hoping that they would, like, start to make Lex Luthor a badass in this one instead of like this like bumbling fool I, I and I'm not saying I, I, I don't know I just don't see I, I, I don't know I don't see that at all and I have nothing against Jesse Eisenberg I, no, I, I really I. don't but I, I don't understand that at all I don't understand this movie I, I don't I don't know I just don't this is just like a, a pathetic attempt to try to catch up with Marvel. They're just rushing it too yeah. much, and they're just throwing too much stuff in there, throwing Batman in there, throwing Wonder Woman in there. They'll probably throw in, like, the Green Lantern or Martian Manhunter or something. It's just all of them. Why not? <laughs> like, I'd love to know who the other choices were. <laughs> like, I don't... Then again, who knows, maybe he'll pull it off and then we'll be like, oh man, we doubted him. Right? I know. Who knows? We'll have to come back to the show and we'll run like the clip of this in like the <laughs> show and everything, but uh, we're out of time. I, I wish I could say more. Maybe next, 
episode, I'll be able to think of what I want to say, but unfortunately we have five seconds left, so have a good week.